photon fizz, please? Sure, bub. Whatever you want. Beep, 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 beep. So, uh, while you're down there, there will be another news break. Um, it's not a massive, it's not like, do 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 giant explosion on blah, blah, blah. It's not as big as that one. It's, it's kind of a follow-up. So, while you guys have been doing your um, hunting of Mika, uh, it's been about a day. Uh, you spent most of the day doing this. Um, the uh, news about the explosions around the system has been doing similar to what, uh, if you guys recall, happened with with uh, 9-11 where it, it's just every channel that's all anything is talking about is about this thing um so at some point while you're while you're doing all of this um this would have come across the news wire you wouldn't have had an opportunity to have caught this live um you would have gotten it on the replay um and what it was is a uh statement uh kind of a uh uh, what is that movie? Uh, almost like a uh, anonymous, you know, like the 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 group anonymous type statement where there's no person speaking. It's more just like a a file being shunted out to the media. Does that make sense? Everybody knows. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, like a press release. Right. Yeah. It's a pre it's a press release, but like from somebody who doesn't want like a person doing it. They have uh, like almost an operator or computer. Like a disembodied head. Right. Yeah. Doing doing the the talking for it. Um, so it's not been playing on a complete loop, but they play it all the time um, <clears throat> because there's not any real new news coming out. So they just keep doing what the news does and rehashing the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> See if I can read this. I don't know if I'll get it in one go. And I certainly won't be able to get all the uh, emotion in it uh, that I might. Um, a new statement has been put out uh, or a news kind of video has been put out by Hands of Valiant or people claiming to be the Hands of Valiant that's taking responsibility or claiming responsibility for all of the explosions around the, the system that happened um, the previous evening, I believe is at where this is now. Um, so right around 24 hours, I think, right around the day. I think it happened last night, if I did that. If I've got my timeline right, which I didn't print out wonderfully. Um, it says, uh, <clears throat> The great houses are a breeding ground for corruption, and their formation has slowly weakened and crippled the soul of the Malabar people. It has turned the people into living droids incapable of directing their own lives. The guilds force conformity and punish independent thinking. The guilds are a cancer that have sapped the will of the people for centuries, and only through blood and fire can this cancer be eliminated. The laughable uproar over slavery is merely a trick by the great houses to distract the Malabar people from the truth that they are already slaves. The Malabar people have no more control over their lives than the slaves they are so desperate to save. We can no longer, in good conscience, push this fight to future generations. We cannot allow our children and grandchildren to live under the yoke of the great houses. We will gladly sell our lives for their future autonomy, content in the knowledge that the sacrifice of our honor will strengthen the resolve of the people and rekindle their thirst for freedom. That is their beep. That is their uh, two paragraph manifesto. Manifesto. Um, in response to this, it does come out uh, the next day because, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of a time skip. While you guys uh, lick your wounds, um, heal that yep. sort of thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I wish I printed out my timeline. Um, and so this echoing. is the next day you said, right? Yeah, it, it'll be the next Sorry, day. I was just. just yeah, it'll be, it's day eight is what, by my count, it's uh, day eight, I believe, day eight. would be the next day. Perfect. Um, so, some point during that day, I didn't really put a time on it, so at some point during that day, there will be a response um, that will be put out. And please tell me I can put it in the email. Um, let's see. Okay. So, there is a statement released, <clears throat> or a, kind of a video uh, response to this. That's released by Fiend Dalen, who, if you guys recall, is now the acting head of the Great Houses. Um, he's a, mm -hmm. one of the survivors, the one that didn't get wounded during the uh, the attack. Um, so he comes out in response to this because for almost a day, this manifesto has been out there circling lots of you know me media doing what media does, tearing into it. You know, you know, are these people right? Are they wrong? You know, the, what you always get the every talking head needs to to have their their piece of the the spotlight to, to talk about it. 
Um, so roughly a day later, while you guys are licking your wounds, getting Mika set up, and there is stuff that I will have you guys do for that. I just want to skip this ahead to keep it all together in one kind of complete piece. Right. I think I'm also going to, you know, <clears throat> we're going to do something about my wounds. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm skipping ahead just to get keep these two cool. things together, <clears throat> and uh, then we, we'll backtrack a little bit to cover all the uh, the – what you guys will do setting up over that day. Um, okay, so this is Fiend's statement. I don't know if I can get this in one act either. <clears throat> Yesterday's heinous acts of terror cannot be allowed to continue. We will not allow the cowardly acts of a small handful of misguided individuals to threaten the way of life we know and love. Our forebears did not create the great houses as some tool to oppress us. The great houses were forged, one hammer strike at a time, by generation after generation of hardworking Malibor citizens. The structure you see today is the culmination of centuries of evolution, sacrifice, and compromise. Have the great houses always been a paragon of virtue, its members above reproach? Of course not, but they have never stood for anything more than family, like any family. There are bad seeds and black banthas. I had to put that in there, sorry, because <clears throat> I don't know if sheep <laughs> exist in this world. <laughs> awesome. However, nice however, touch. Yeah, however, we have always been the toughest on our own failings. Every instance of impropriety has been scoured out of our families and made us stronger, and now we will do the same as we always have. There are people among our houses, hiding in plain sight, determined to destroy the foundation we have built our glorious history upon. They are your neighbors, your co-workers, your friends, and quite possibly your blood. They are a cancer that must be burned out of our family before they spread too far to stop. I urge each and every one of you to look around you, Open your eyes and take a good look at the people you take for granted. Question their motives and actions. Any hint or question of their disloyalty should be brought to light for all to see. <clears throat> I know what you're all thinking. What of the Empire? What is their role in all of this? My answer is simple. There are those that would paint the Empire as an irresistible force, that any who stand in their way will be crushed beneath their heel. These lies of the rebellion are no more plain than here in our beloved system. The Empire has honorably stood by and allowed the Malibor people to guide their own destiny. They have demanded nothing of us that we do not already demand of ourselves, and yet they are still mistrusted. I have spoken at length with Governor Haskin and the High Council over the past week, and I have come to the only sensible decision there is. <clears throat> the High Council has formally requested aid from the Empire in eradicating the terrorist threat in the Malibor system and I have pledged the loyalty and resources of the Great Houses to that decision. From this point forward, the Great Houses will act in concert with the Empire and the High Council to root out and destroy the traitors in our midst. We will find these hands of Valiant wherever they hide. We will root out this band of rebels and show the galaxy that the Great Houses of, Malib of the Malibor system are not to be provoked. The next hammer strike will not just continue the evolution of our family, but also crush those who would threaten our future. And it cuts out. Blast. This is not good. No, not at all. We need to no. go paint that over that hand on the front door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, I thought you already did that. <laughs> I, I kind of thought we did too, but I, it's a good point. If we didn't, let's get on that. Put, it, put another coat over it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like <clears throat> which which group the em is the empire supporting? It it feels like there's two different power plays happening here. There's the hands of Valion and the and a, a coup slash and witch hunt. Which is being justified to bring the empire into the system. Might be they may be part of the same ploy, really. Yeah, they could be paying the hands of Valian and now gonna be staffing the great houses, if you will. You know? Right. It's not good. I'm 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 really kinda curious to know what Clayson thinks of all of this. Um, cause kind of his boss just went in, 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 uh, in alignment with the empire. I'm kind of wondering if he's thinking about a career change. 
that might not be a bad idea to contact uh, Clayson while we're working with Mika on uh, <laughs> on whatever technical thing that you're telling him to do. It's, it's way over, over my head, whatever's going on down there, but I'm sure it's important. That's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, check in with Clayson and see if there's any uh, if anything changes because of this. I expect we'll be seeing an increased imperial presence here. Agreed. Okay. Um, while you guys uh, get your meat set up, let's do the uh, <clears throat> some of the in between uh, that day. So that day eight stuff. Right. So um, there's a, a rewind, a little bit of yeah. A we're rewind. just yeah. We're just heading back to, to okay. Like I said, that was kind of midday. You know, one o'clock ish ish. Like most politicians like to do their post lunch uh, press conferences. So that's that's kind of where that came out. So you got about half a day, twelve hours or so, which I assume part of that's going to be sleeping um, for you guys to do your yep. Uh, what, the starting yeah. of your healing and okay. and getting Mika set up, um, that sort of thing. So I looked up um, healing. Okay. Um, and I think uh, Kurt has a uh, emergency med pack. I do. As well uh, as some stim packs, but yeah. Right. I think the emergency med pack is probably what you want to use, because I, I think using that doesn't use it up. You don't expend it. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't make sense to... Uh, yeah, to stim packs but... are like emergency combat. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I have over a half of my current total in wounds taken so the we're, it's going to be a medicine check which is intellect which i hear you have a lot of <laughs> yeah that's, that's <laughs> I hear you. Uh, and it's going to be an average check and that, and obviously that's something kurt can do i can be you know trying to bandage you up and everything correct right yeah yep. you're reading the you know manual for the oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> how are you there's, little, how are there's you a little like speed, file but... on bothan physiology in there <laughs> and you should have also you should have also regained one wound just by sleeping through the night i think yeah i know you do get something back for sleeping okay. um, but you, I, I assume you guys have to address do something first or does it does the timing even matter it says for each full night's rest the character recovers one wound regardless of the character's current state of health oh there you go well that would get me to to six which is um half my wound so it'd still be an average check to, to heal. okay that's that's got to be reassuring when you get wheeled into the er to see the doctor all right put him on the table Hold on a second. He pulls like a brochure out of a little standy, like you're at the yeah. vacation and it's at a hotel. Let's see, Bothan, Bothan, Bothan. Ah, there it is, Bothan. That's <laughs> hysterical. It's like three pages, three pages. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's now, is there... right now. That's all his first aid kit is, is just a bunch of pamphlets. <laughs> pamphlets and band-aids. <laughs> that's right. Uh, where, yeah, where to, where to apply. Um and is there any kind of a boost or anything for the med pack, or is that just the enabler? Uh, that uh, this is all out of my realm. I was uh, um, I was a little busy. No, I don't, I don't think the the med pack gives you a boost or anything. I'll okay assist you by you know telling you about body <laughs> pointing, physiology. Pointing <laughs> yeah. to the stuff I have. No, no, there's that's... an artery that goes here. I think over here, maybe. That's, this one uh... runs this way. Um, if you. <laughs> it's uh i get My... the, I, I always look back at things i'm familiar with so this reminds me of when zoidberg is being uh, uh autopsied on futurama it's like no i need that to live oh just kidding like just take as they're taking stuff out of them like, okay that, that connects to my vocal cords and the guy starts sawing faster <laughs> oh yeah all right Ed, okay. all right so i did a i did a, a medicine check at average with the boost, and I have three successes and one advantage. Okay. So that gets me uh, three wounds back. So uh, that brings me up to, let's see. It's nine. Assuming I had one good night's rest. Yeah, yeah, you would have got the one good night's rest. Um, All right. So that's nine of I y'all decided to do something. Um... Standard med packs. Med pack standard. You have an emergency med pack? I guess it's the same. That's correct. Yeah, I don't think it's different, yeah. Oh, it just says they allow you to do it without penalty. 
is what the emergency one does. And then a full med pack would grant you the boost die. Ah. Otherwise, you'd do a medicine check with, with a penalty. Right. Cool. That's, I guess, the field, field medic with some like torn, torn, torn T-shirts. Um, okay. Uh, Kurt, you were hurt too, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep. I don't remember how seriously, but uh, you would probably need the same, right? So I'm, I, uh, I've not taken half of my damage. I'm less than half in damage. Um, I took five wounds. Uh, and I was at 15 with that plus one bonus. Let's see what it says. Death. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, so it's an easy check for that. Okay. And I assume somebody's helping me. Do I get a boost? <laughs> he, he totally left. He Anybody? totally left you Anybody? Alone. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> left. No. Bye. He's gone. Thanks for uh, going. You're gone. No, yeah. I'll, I'm going I'll to the bar. Up. Get these dice. Okay. All you have to do is say scalpel, and you hand him a scalpel. And that's like one boost die for that. Please. Yeah, I get, yeah, I get handed Slashix axe. <laughs> um, <laughs> this will do the trick. So I, I, I got three success and two advantage on that roll. Yeah, so you had gotten three uh, wounds back. Okay, plus the one for sleeping. All yes. Night. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you actually heal up fairly quick in this game. I mean, you could be, at least the way it reads, at death's door and like, oh, two weeks, I feel brand, brand new. <laughs> and there's our, there's our strain gone now as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, it, the, a lot of the checks are, are for like right Right in the middle of combat, or really close there on. You guys have had okay. plenty of time to recover from the from the strain. Okay, um, so now to business. You guys want to have uh, Mika start his exploration of the data files, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I want him to to explore the data files, and as we're going along, um, mm -hmm. I or somebody, you know, will be also recording kind of like the key if I can mm -hmm. um, so that God forbid something were to happen to Mika we're not dead in the water right. so we're trying yeah. to build the Rosetta Stone if you will as we go gotcha. along I yeah. gotcha okay um, so I'm I'm only going to allow one person to help <laughs> not everybody uh, so I would assume that's going to be Biff that's what yeah, I wrote Kurt. down yeah Kurt should help. Okay. Yeah, I, I wrote down Kurt to roll this um, it's going to be unassisted, so you're not going to get any boost dice for it. Gotcha. Um, and, and I'm going to explain how this is going to work. Um, and I don't know if this exists anywhere in the game. This is just the way I, I dreamed it up while I was sitting at work. Um, it's going to be a progressive, like it's going to start out very difficult and get progressively easier. Um, I, I kind of look at this almost like a game of, uh, uh, wheel of fortune. You know, you're going to, you're starting with nothing and you're going to try and, and work from there down. But as, the, as you get more and more letters, as you get more and more into it, it gets easier and easier to, to piece together. So um, I need you to roll your computer skill. Um, and it's going to start at the top end, which is formidable, I believe. Five dice. Okay. Um, and for every attempt at this, it's going to take you six hours. So... And you, once you get this down to from to zero, essentially, you will have cracked the entire thing. But you will get pieces as you go. Um, so, uh, and there will, of course, be setbacks. So this is not going to be a very fast thing. This is going to take you a while. Uh, okay. So, well, just just keep that in mind. So every time you want to roll, it's it's going to be another six hours that you guys have spent delving through this thing. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of okay with that, um, <clears throat> letting Kurt to his, his devices there. I, I don't know if you guys had, like, leads that you wanted to jump on. I don't know if I should be doing this in character or not, but <laughs> it all seems well, like more more thinking than Slashik is used to. That's why I'm not speaking in his um, voice. One thing, oh, yeah. Yeah. one thing that I wanted to do was try and figure out what uh, bottles have been drugged. Right. Oh, I mean, there's that's, always one old test for that. Yeah. I, I kind of was thinking of the, the same lines, like let Kurt do his thing with Mika downstairs. You, me, and um, and Keela, 
uh, Oscillate, me and Keela will all kind of be upstairs, you know, fixing the place up, checking the, the alcohol, seeing what's in store, and really just getting it ready to actually open. Um, yeah. Right. So this can be you, a bit of a montage time for you guys, if you would like. Montage time. Like to, it. So it's the uh, – I love pulling in old movies. You saw Hackers, right? I guess everybody here has seen Hackers. Oh, yeah, Hackers. And you know yeah. where it's kind of uh, – it does that scene towards the end where it has uh, zero cool, um, that guy sitting at the computer typing, and everybody's like zooming around him really fast? Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's that's what I'm envisioning going on right now as you got – Perfect. Uh, <laughs> you got Kurt and, and Mika. There hovered over the thing, pointing at stuff, and you guys are in the background, like sword fighting and <laughs> yelling at each other, and <laughs> taking drinks and doing all you know, whatever behind the scenes. So, um, perfect. But uh, if you guys do want to get a hold of Clayson, it's yes. before all this, uh, before you start. Um, well, how um, long is it going to take to get him, get him here? Uh, not long. I mean, you guys have a pretty good communication network with him now, and he Six knows where hours. to go. Potentially six hours. Yeah, yeah, it could easily be that if you want. So you can you can set a time. <laughs> yeah, less yeah. than six hours if you want it to be six hours. Yeah, it can. But, yeah, I would say is let me you know while we're doing the first six hours of work, you guys have the meeting with Clayson is the way I would approach it. Yeah, yeah. That and sounds... then and then there's a decision point, and maybe you guys can do something for the next six hours while I'm you know working with with Mika again. We can kind of have these six yeah. hour checks as to what we want to do. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. All right. Okay, so go ahead and give me your roll, um, Kurt. Yep. Okay, so, it's, so uh, um, it's five difficulty dice. Yeah, five. So yeah, I got five purple, and I'm doing it against my computer check. So you get, um, yep, yep. And it's no boost. There's no, no boost, boost at all. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I got I got one success and three threats. Damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Well, you were able to identify hard way out of this. So you're able to actually find, and this is purely based on, as far as you can tell, that was the easiest thing to get because, hey, Kurt recognizes, <laughs> not Kurt, you recognize and Mika both kind of are two sides of this coin. You're able to link together. Okay, this this is probably hard ways based on the, um, the number of times um, you recall Blasso having had a shipment, knowing that they probably all came from hard ways. And him putting two and two together with the times he came and picked stuff up. So not a very deep into it, but you're able to pick up that much of it. Um, it's fleeting, though. That's really all you're getting um, for your first six hours. And the threat didn't really hurt you. It just slowed you down and kept it limited for how detailed you got about it. <clears throat> but you can identify one place. Okay. Cool. So you want to have the conversation with Clayson now and then yeah. decide... Yeah, Yep, what we do for the next six hours. All right, let's do it. Um, he will <clears throat> stop by. It'll be post-shift, um, so after his shift for the day. Uh, let's make it same afternoon, evening of day eight. So you would have worked, uh, had the the uh, healed up all night, tooled around, getting things set up, uh, watched the press conference or you know the statement made by uh, yeah. Fien, and then just after that said, okay, we got to get to work. Um, got into work, and then he shows up late late that evening for the shift. So uh, late in the day, day eight, uh, just for those keeping records. Um, and he'll come in. He looks very frustrated. Um, very. He actually ha doesn't come in by himself. He comes in with a couple of uh, <clears throat> other officers, uh, not like high-ranking officers, other security guys. Cool. Uh, they, they all pile in there. They look like they're off duty, um, but they they come in. They I think you guys gave him a key, didn't you? I, don't remember. I thought you guys gave him a key. I think well, he I said that like, he could just get in. Right, like he. Like I think that the part override. of the yeah, and also part of the premise is, is that he's really doubling down on this because he's getting yeah. stuff out of it. So right, and and, and they're not going to come in there like clandestine because the place is still shut down. It was the scene of some big attack. So it's not, doesn't look too strange for a day or so later for, uh, for the right. security people to come through there. So he's not like completely, he's not by himself. He's not coming in as if he's completely off duty. He looks like, like he's just kind of dropping in for a quick visit to check up on the new owners perhaps. All right. Um, and he comes in very frustrated, all but slams the front door. Oh, um, Clayson, Clayson, how through. are you? Not doing pretty good. I'm or not doing pretty not doing well at all. Um, I'm sure you guys come have, have a drink. Seen this thing. 
it's have on the house. Figured out, have y'all figured out which is which? I yet? figure about halfway through. <laughs> Let's give him some of the untested one. <laughs> All right, let me uh, roll against this here. Um. Small sips there, buddy. <laughs> small, small. Some of these pack a real punch. <laughs> He knows all about this. He, he he eyeballs yours. Just one of the good ones or the bad ones. Pretty sure that's good. <laughs> Pretty sure. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> he's having a bad day. Oh, yeah, boy. He's, he's, he's if he's willing to take a swig. Small what sips. The hell? Small oh, sips. No, he's doing. <laughs> well, you don't notice any change in him. He could okay. just could just be an old Irishman that just can hold his whiskey a lot better than most people. Most people. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. So. Uh, yeah, he's like, you guys had to have seen that stupid, you know, dimwit, uh, whatever you call it, Dalen. What's, what's Dalen? Yeah, Fiend Dalen uh, on the freaking hollow, all but selling our... Selling you out to the empire. empire. Yeah. I saw. Scum. I'm going to spit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he uh he downs his drink and motions for another one. Empire's um, no good, I'll tell you. Yeah, I think we are. I think we're all in agreement here on that. You see, his buddies kind of um, nodding. They're they're taking drinks over the side as well. Um, I assume you offered all of them drinks. Yeah, yeah. And that guy's a iron belly. Yeah, gotta be polite, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, make a note of that right quick. All right. Um. The uh, he said, yeah, it's uh, he goes, I can't even begin to tell you how how bad it's it's getting in the houses. I mean, it, there's there's almost a cry for uh, not mutiny, but like a I've never been in a union, but like the where they recall for a vote. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like a vote of no confidence. But yeah, like a vote, vote of no a, confidence. Yeah, vote, vote of no confidence <laughs> for the uh, <laughs> yeah, for uh, for uh, the leadership at this point. He goes, it, it, it had, nobody, it's never done that. And he goes, I don't think anybody in our recorded history we've ever had anything like that. And this is this is a uh, this is going to set back relations uh, between the guild houses uh, for centuries. Not as much as the Empire. Uh, yeah, That'll set you yeah. back real far, real far. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go. But because the problem is there's a lot of people, a lot of people out there who, after the attacks, just agree with them. They're willing to take whatever they can get, you know, because they think that this band of whatever they are out there, and I don't like the way he – tied the rebellion to these hands people because i know that they are not the same that that these hands people sure as hell are not you know uh did they ever did they ever consider call themselves rebels and rebellion or they call themselves the the alliance the alliance yeah I, 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 because he wouldn't call himself a, a rebel. He would, right? He right. Refer to himself as the alliance. He goes, they're not the same as the alliance. He goes, I don't know who these hands people are, but I am bound and determined to find out. And so are my superiors. We want to know who these people are, and we've got people on the ground trying to find it. He goes, you guys are <clears throat> as close to this as anybody. He goes, I don't know if this slavery thing is going to end up uh, running there, or if it's just another wild bantha chase. <clears throat> but. Uh, he goes, I guess, we're in for a penny, in for a pound, right? We're, uh, we need to follow this up as far as we can and see where you've gotten. Have you gotten anywhere? I mean, please tell me you got something. We're working on a lead. I don't, it's, it's not safe to tell you the information, I think, just to compartmentalize. But we're working on something. I think it's going to actually get us somewhere. Well, I hope you're right. Um, hold up, let me roll. <laughs> Yep, the old Irishman. <laughs> yep, that guy is okay. Small sips, everybody. Small sips. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see one of the guys uh, tip his drink over. <laughs> Oops. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Slipped. Uh, can I get another one? Friend, friend, let, me, let me get that one for you. And Let's get you a new, new drink. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Phil, you and I are on the put same one, page with that. that one Mark that one aside. We're going to put that one aside, and we're, we're going to figure out why the hell. Um, make me – How you guys have been fooling with this, I'm guessing, testing on each other for the past six hours or so, trying to – Of course guess, we have been. That's going to figure I it. all the fun. That's what – <laughs> they didn't want they want you clear and sober for your for your task. Yes, we um, do. Give me 
see. I need I need something besides the stupid perception. I'm tired of using that. It's like the only thing. It's it's the used Medicine, everywhere. Maybe. Uh, it's like a sedative. Give me a streetwise. Both of you guys give me a hard streetwise. A uh, three die streetwise. Since y'all been doing this for six hours. <laughs> I failed with one advantage. Nope. You know they're in bottles. <laughs> Ooh. Um yeah, I'm fail I I'm I'm passing with like uh two triumphs. Oh so. wow. Okay, so when he tips his bottle over, it dawns on you what the common link between these are. It's just the shelf under the bar. You guys have just been grabbing and the shelf under the bar has you know a an upright between it. Mm. Uh, Ones on one side are good. Ones on the other side are not good. Um, but it, you're like, oh, my God, it's been right in front of us the whole time. <laughs> We've just been like, no, you're not feeling anything, not feeling anything. But you guys have been really hit or miss because mm. different people have different physiologies. Um, you can tell that um, you have been giving Clayson the ones from the drug stash. <laughs> <laughs> Let's switch out Clayson's. <laughs> That he's, yeah, he he doesn't show one bit of effect from it. It's like, <laughs> like I said, I, I, Listen, let's get you belly. a fresh, fresh drink. I, I'm not sure. Just, just you, let me have that. <laughs> um, and let's just for giggles. You have uh, uh, 14 bottles of the bad stuff left. Okay. Perfect. That's actually good. We can utilize that in the future. Yeah. I figured y'all. I figured y'all ask... count that. Well, well, uh, Asklet's getting them uh, the fresh drinks the, the fresh synthols i'm gonna ask clayson um clayson have you ever since this announcement have you heard anything from or about uh queen talia uh about this whole incident has she said anything made any public addresses from the paradox system or anything like that uh, I, I don't know i don't keep in contact with royalty <laughs> i wish i did Woo, that's what i'm talking about you know what i mean oh. um, <laughs> but uh no i, I I don't even know if she wants to bother herself with, with our little system. She might, she might say something, but um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, that's, that's inter uh, system politics. That's way above my pay grade. Okay. Just, just a curiosity. I wasn't sure if any of your agents had said anything, uh, heard anything. That's fine. Nah. But uh, I do have a question for you guys. Did you guys ever go and look into that uh, Mika fellow we had discussed the last time I was here? Oh, uh, yeah. We, we went to his apartment. He wasn't there. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, uh, then I might have a bit of bad news for you guys. You see, uh, late yesterday, uh, around uh, just after dinner time or thereabouts, um, um, His girlfriend's apartment complex and pretty much every building within, I don't know, say half a block radius, half a, you know, a 50 meter radius, uh, burnt down yesterday. Um, so I, that lead oh, might be dead he, completely. You think he was there? How many dead? Uh, they're still counting. <laughs> But uh, it was his girlfriend's apartment, so maybe he wasn't there. We don't know. But uh, probably... Uh, uh, it's a bit of a coincidence. Yeah, it's a little strange. Wherever you guys go, oh. bad things seem to follow. Oh. So I seem to recall you being at Blasso's just a few days ago, just before oh. it went up in flames. Are you guys doing something you're not telling me about? Wait, didn't we? Didn't no, we, we, we I mean, we told him about no, Blasos. No, no, you knew about Blasos, but what he's what he, what he's saying is, <laughs> you were. Yeah, just, I, I get where he's coming from. <laughs> yeah, fire is following you guys. Listen, uh, Clayson. No disintegrations. That's not our. That's not our thing. We don't. We don't burn. We we shove each Well, mm, <laughs> we don't. We don't burn <laughs> innocent people. We don't blow thing. Blow buildings up. That's not our. That's not our style. Like I said earlier, we did have to dispose of the bodies that were here. It was very expensive. Uh, you know, right. there is that. Um, well, then, if you but guys aren't involved, 
I'll I tell would... you what I I think is happening is I think someone is trying to cover up their tracks. The places that we've gone, they're all linked to the slave operation. I think that someone is trying to is worried that they're going to be discovered and they're covering their, their tracks. Well, if if that's true, there's uh, one very glaring location that you guys have been to that has still not been burnt to the ground. This one. Oh, this one. <laughs> Indeed, and he tips his glass. Ding! <laughs> well, um, if there's nothing else, I think I'm going to go before the fireworks start. Oh, thanks. Great. See unless you later. There's <laughs> unless there's something else y'all wanted. I'll get yeah, if you're, you know. Feel free to uh, not leave us for dead. Whatever. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe. Uh... Listen, do you have a fire extinguisher that you could loan us? <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's one around here somewhere. The uh, uh, local building code requires it. Guild rules. <laughs> he. I only wish he had a, a hat he could tip as he walked out the door. <laughs> Ding! It walks out. <laughs> Thanks for the drink, guys. Yeah, th awesome. thank you. <laughs> All right, now he's gone. This is actually like crazy awesome and, and, and cool stuff. So we should we should talk about what we just learned. Yeah, so what, what you gathered from this, just as a quick, um, is that he's upset. Everybody he knows is upset. Um, and that, that's about as far as he's connected to anything that, of, uh, that you can tell. He's being guarded about how, how connected he is. Hmm. Um, Biff, are you saying something? No, no. Oh, okay. I, I thought I heard your, your mic okay. crackle. I wasn't sure if you're okay. Um, so, um, Oscar good move on, uh, keeping, keeping that on the down low with, uh, he doesn't need to know that Mika's here. <clears throat> I think I think that when and if we want to force an engagement, that's when we can tell uh, Clayson and or anyone else. You know, I, I think that at this point you you're absolutely right, especially considering that that entire complex was burned to the ground. It wasn't even right. his primary residence. That was his his female companions. Yeah, obviously someone's pretty close on our tail, and I don't think that encounter with the melted skulls the other day was entirely accidental, if you know what I mean. Hmm, that would be interesting. Burning, though, and explosions, this does sound like that uh, Kinene character. He did have, like, a flamer on his one wrist, did he not? It's true. He could be involved. Do you think that perhaps he is a some kind of Imperial agent? That is, uh, as you stated, covering the tracks and trying to make sure there's no links to the Imperials. It's or possible. This is yeah. just just like a hired gun, like Valion. I'm almost after after everything that we're hearing now. I almost feel like maybe there's a much closer association to the uh, to the Empire than I initially thought. Hey, you know, <laughs> I, I know you've been saying this all along, but. All, this, all of a sudden, your conspiracy theories, uh, Oscillate, are starting to see. Empire like... is behind everything. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the links, the connections are there. You just have to see them. Look closely. <laughs> they, give, they give you the uh, tinfoil hat gore. Or <laughs> yeah. All right. Open, um... open your eyes. <laughs> How do your eyes, do they, like, horizontal... It's blinking or is it blink? Blink for me. I'm I'm blinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's vertical vertical blinking. Okay, great. Vertical blinking. <laughs> you know, if it's reptiles, you know, you know, it's weird. Anyway. Yeah, I, I all I know is that the Empire is behind something bad here. Now there could I, um, be other forces at work. I mean, when when the Hands of Valion first showed their faces at the at the meeting of the Great Houses, the Imperials did not seem overly concerned with their sudden appearance, right? Nor did Queen Talia. True. I'm not sure that Queen Talia is in league with them, with the no, Empire. No, of course not. Of course not. But there's well, I mean, certainly it's that... It is possible, but... 
I don't know. Remember that the that learn was it learn Dano? So. He he turned to make the move on the queen, and he was dropped. So the hands might actually have it in for both. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm I'm assuming you're talking with Kurt in some way for this yeah, thing. Hey, hey, whoa, well, hey, Kurt. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I'm on break part, part of the montage. It stops for a second, is it? Uh, yeah. Hopefully, your investigation with how's your investigation with uh, Harlow going? We're we're cracking it. We haven't learned much. Um, good, but good. from what you guys are telling me, I'm a I'm a little concerned about staying here with uh, you know, with the only computer that's going to be able to hack this, and well, considering how long it's going to take. We need that I terminal. Think that, I think that all this means, just like Oscar just said, is that we, we need this terminal and we need you to, to double time it. I think you go right back down there and, and, and keep working. I am going to start Chop. scoping out the, the, the exterior. I think I might even be better off staying outside the bar for several hours, maybe just watching as people come and go, seeing if I see anyone suspicious go and place like a bomb around or a thermal detonator near the, the, the yeah. building. I gotta I have to make sure that we're protected from the outside because the inside is is one thing. I could easily you know fight someone on the inside if they're gonna put thermal detonators around the base of the, the bar without us realizing it, that's gonna be a problem. So I let's let's do that and uh, let's get to our, our duties. But as Osclet said, chop chop. Yeah. I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> Yeah. Gotta heal up. You use I gotta heal up. You could use it's it. Great. I'm it uh, we're gonna go with the double caps. We're going back to work. Yeah. So I I like this though. This is this is good. This is actually really juicy, and I think that we've got a good plan here. So Kurt, definitely down in that uh, with Mika again. I I'm going outside. He uh, Osclet's healing up, right? Yep. All right. So, so let's pass, just let's just to be clear. I, the suggestion was to, to take the terminal and go someplace else. Oh, oh be is, safer. It, is it portable? Uh, Mika's going to be like, no, 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 we can't move this thing <laughs> because I don't know how they built it. Okay. I don't know. I, I mean, we could move it, but maybe moving it is going to screw it up. Uh, he, he's like, I'd rather just do this here. And besides, we'll, we'll be safe. Kurt, you don't worry about a thing. I will, I well, will be in know, charge of safety. Worry about some things, so uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I almost got yes, blasted to two pieces the other day. You worry yeah, about some things; about it's some good. Things. <laughs> okay. Safe in the bar. <laughs> All right, let's 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 stay where we are and do it. I'm gonna okay. keep an eye out. I'm I'm going super vigilant. All right. Um. Uh, Kurt, give me. All right. So it's basically late evening. Of day eight. Let's make sure I keep track right. of all this. Yep. Um, all right. Late evening day eight. All right. Uh, give me four die, uh, four difficulty die um, computer roll, please. Okay. Um, okay, it's just a single success. All right. That's enough. Um, after another long night, uh, it's now very early in the morning. Um, you can hear, even downstairs, you can hear uh, your boss Hold and friend snoring away. You said snoring away. it's in the morning already? Shouldn't it be? Because it was late. It was after time now. It was after dinner when uh, when Clayson, if you recall, Clayson came in. Um, I thought that was the morning. Am I crazy? No, that was late day eight when he came in because he came in after his shift. But didn't we? S oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yep, yep. All right. Yep, yep. Um, All right so now continue. it would be early day nine, is where we're at now. After when he, okay. when he finishes this, it'll be early day nine. Um, well, very early, as in like two ish, three ish in the morning. Um, you uh, get you you finally piece together another another chunk of this thing, and you're able to using what you get from Hardways, you're able to ID. Uh, Blasso's and the number of shipments that went through um, between Hardways and Blasso's. Um, the best you can tell, best you can tell, is approximately twenty 
shipments went through um, over the course of three or four months. Uh, so uh, quite a quite a hefty haul was going through this place and through uh, through Blastos, of course. Um, but you're also able to find that uh, before Blastos, there was a similar carrier um, to him that was used. If, if you guys recall back, they said they'd only been using him for a couple months or for a few months. Yeah, um, correct. Yeah, right. so you're yeah, so you're able to dig out of this following the same chain. You're able to dig out. Uh, you're going that direction with it right now, if that makes sense. So you found hard ways, and you're you're pushing out on the Blasto side because that's where you've been the most familiar. Um, they went with a carrier named Bracton, B-R-A-C-K-T-O-N. Um, you, just as an offhand while you were doing this, you did a quick search on the name Bracton, um, and you found he was arrested on spice smuggling charges just a few weeks weeks or a month or so before the switch over to Blasso's, uh, which would probably explain why um, they stopped using him, uh, as far as you can tell. I mean, he, that's all you know is that he was he was rung up and arrested on spice smuggling charges. And uh, the... Uh, Do we know that, if he's still in, in jail? Uh, he is still shows is in jail. Um, when you start to dig it up, he is on a penal colony on Hovan, which is a moon of uh, Malibor 3, which is a capital planet. Uh, so he is on a penal colony of Hovan, uh, which is takes up a large landmass on Hovan. It's not uh, nothing super particular, but he is still in prison. Yes, because it's only been a few months. <laughs> it's not been a long time. Right. Uh, so, uh, but what you can tell from from your last few hours is that this is not a new thing. It has been going on for quite a while, um, and you can tell Bracton was was used for. You know, yep. a good year or two. Um, not as many shipments. It does look like the number of shipments picked up um, over time. Like it, it didn't used to be twenty in three months. It used to be, you know, a few a month here or there. Um, and then just for whatever reason, it started to pick up the pace um, here in the last, you know, quarter of a year. So that's what you've gotten so far. Um, you've you've kind of so taken hard ways down hard the other direction. Down, so you've yeah, seen where it where it was headed. Or at least the money was. Headed. If this is if this is like early, like a.m. like two a.m. three a.m. You said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early day night. Yeah, early day night. Real so work. I almost think that. Yeah, I almost think that. I feel like I should take like a night shift and just stay out. You know, I, I'm sure I can handle it. And then you guys kind of rest up through the through the morning, wake up and and keep hacking at it. And then I'll I'll get some sleep when you guys are awake or something like that. Yeah, you'll yeah, definitely need to get some right. sleep at some point. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose no yeah. objection on my end. <laughs> yeah. Just to stay at your at your at your best. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm sure I can pass a resilience test to stay up through the night because I am not going to sleep if <laughs> with with all this critical yeah. stuff happening. Yeah. yeah, you'll you'll be fine. You can obviously sleep during the day, um, while these guys are up and about doing their thing. Um okay. So do that. Yeah, so it's early day nine. You can, if you're, if uh, um, Kurt and Mika and all them are, are you guys going to try and plow ahead and do another one? Or are you going to like take a take a breather for a while? Or what's what's y'all's plan? Yeah, I, I would recommend that we get like four or five hours of sleep. If it's two a.m., you know, six or seven o'clock in the morning, we're at it again, but we're right, sleeping right. for a handful of hours. Yeah. Okay. So you guys take the night. I'm awake. You guys take the night, and then when you guys wake up to do more hacking, I'll go in and sleep on the couch at the at, right outside Sounds the main good. entrance. Um, okay. okay. Uh, so call it call it breakfast time on day yeah. nine. So so I'm assuming the night breakfast. was uneventful then. Yeah. 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 Nothing happened overnight. All right. Good. <laughs> um, Kurt, can can uh, I borrow your uh, med pack? Uh, just work on some of these uh, wounds. I still gotta. This still kind of hurts over here, in my thigh, <laughs> thigh zone. Yeah, let, let me take a look at that. Let me take a look at it. Let me swap out the bandages. Let yeah, me I don't know how long it's going to you know, if that is going to slow you down. I don't want to slow you I down. This I don't think it takes that long, too. It's pretty pretty short. Okay. So I'll boost you. Yeah, this isn't surgery. It's just... <laughs> this is this one is now an easy uh, right. medicine. It's you know, not surgery yet. If he screws it up bad so enough, should, it might go back to surgery. Kill this one. And it's an easy. Yeah. And is it going to be boosted? Yeah. 
Uh, four success to advantage. All right, advantage. cool. So that's me full health. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. All right, okay. let's have breakfast. Yep. Um, um, you guys, so you guys have, have breakfast. Guys have Okay, go ahead. Yep. Uh, hey, Jay, if you don't mind, just cut the, like, can you, uh, like, mute your mic? Oh, sorry, sorry, mic? sorry. Yeah, it just, it's, I keep hearing the echo of everybody. It's really. I keep weird. forgetting. Um, you guys have pretty much got the bar back to, to looking pretty good. Um, uh, Keela has gotten everything arranged really nice. Um, all the rooms are, like, they're cleaner than they've ever been. Because, <laughs> you know, I haven't really had a lot to do other than clean and, and organize and, and. And uh, she's got the place looking pretty good. She took down a bunch of pictures, like a bunch of the crap on the walls, uh, mm -hmm. especially anything that had any of the previous staff in it. She took <laughs> all those down, like random memorabilia she kept. But if it was, you know, you know, Joe Blow's, you know, Pazak trophy boop, went off the wall, um, anything and everything that was a reminder of the previous owners uh, or inhabitants of this place has been stripped out of it um, in every every aspect that she could. Um, but she did leave some of the stuff tactfully, you know, left a few things there. So it wasn't just bare walls. Uh, but otherwise the place is ready to open if, if, uh, if, and when you guys, uh, are prepared to do so. Um, and she lets you know this, she goes, this place is ready to open. Can we, you know, you might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Let's, let's maybe, do, let's... maybe. Well, no, it's a it's a bar. We could wait until the evening. Like you can get one more six hour session out of it. I'm sure uh, of hacking, and then we could open it. I'll be awake by that time too. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Um, okay. So you guys going to set about uh, the standard routine of making sure everything's ship shape well. Uh, uh, Slash Slash sleeps. I'm and sleeping. Our Computer guys go to work. Yeah, I'm gonna take a uh, a look around the local area. Also, just to to you know sort of check up on check up on you know oh, sort yeah. of what That's Slashy what was... was doing. Uh, I'm gonna ask right. did, around. Did... I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach. I'm gonna be asking people nearby if they've seen anything. Uh, just asking around. If there's anything suspicious going on. Ah, okay. Um, well, as you do that, uh, there's not a lot of uh, what's the response. Most of the people are like, ah, yeah, "I pay. I try my best not to pay attention." Um, the uh, there's not as much activity at the bars as there used to be. Uh, obviously, it's closed. <laughs> yeah, they don't know that you work that you own mm. the place, work there. So, um, oh, I, I work at I. We're oh, fixing that place up. Yeah, I'm gonna, talk. I'm gonna talk. Uh, we're fixing the place up. Tell your friends. Grand opening tonight. Grand oh. reopening tonight. Oh, good. Be nice to you know, tell couple, your friends. A couple of them respond with the whole. Oh, good. <laughs> be nice to not have to drag myself halfway across the sector to get a to get a. It's gonna be great. Drink. So, um, well, good. Good. What happened to the old owner? You know, we saw all the. I don't know. He's gone. Sure. Uh, place <laughs> of sale all of a sudden. I think something bad happened there. I'm not really sure. The police have. I've been looking around. I try not to ask too many questions about that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. 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 I completely understand you there. Um, was that cute little Twi'lek still working there? You bet. Oh, well, that's all I care about. That and the drinks. That's what you get from average. All right, buddy. Just on the, <laughs> on the street. <laughs> your day's work. <clears throat> that's something. Uh, in your, your time. Um, all right, great. Kurt, three dice, please. Or three difficulty. Finding it easier going. Let's get this queued up. Uh, two success, one threat. Um, all right. You, after another grueling six hours, um, it is now early afternoon um, that uh, you have finished it. You are fairly confident you have located at least two other chains that are similar to Blastos in Hardway. In other words, in other ways, in other words. You've got hard way to Blastos, and you're fairly certain you've found two other uh, hard ways. Does that make sense? Like two other places that are similar to hard ways in your, yeah. in your chart, in your, your flow chart. 
Um, that's you don't have their names yet, but you're like these two streams of data look eerily similar to the one that we have identified. So that's what that's what you're able to pick up over your next, uh, over your next uh, uh, handful of hours toiling away. Okay. Okay. Shoot, we really we really need that information on uh, their identities if you can manage it. Um, we got to figure out if they're still standing or if those places have been burned to the ground yet. You know, that's going to be useful information for us. Yeah, I completely agree. I just wish we were able to stitch more together faster. Well, it's almost opening time. I mean, you could continue to do your thing while we're engaging customers upstairs. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm in this. So let let me keep hacking away with uh, with Mika. Uh, you guys uh, make sure everybody's having a good time upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll keep plugging away. That that'll be an interesting evening for the gents. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm down for another. So what, what this would be? What maybe like? Yeah, it's like we're talking like three o'clock in the afternoon yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah, it's about three o'clock when you when you kind of piece that last bit together. Yeah. Um, so I say so, I, I'm willing to keep pressing. Okay. Um, and you guys are going to open it around dinner time, I guess. I don't know, I don't know what what time bars yeah, only. Like happy open. hour. He's... Happy hour. So yeah, right around now, then y'all could open it up. Go on to. Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah. I think that as far as uh, our like roles, there's only technically three of us. I don't know. Is that? Do you think that's enough? That's not suspicious, right? For uh, to run a bar. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming everybody knows what they're doing: bartender, waitress, bouncer. Waitress, bouncer. Yeah. Okay. So we know what I'm going to be doing. Obviously, bartender. L O L. -L. <laughs> um. That would actually be that would actually be great. Like totally throw everybody off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, standing behind the counter the with a rag, washing the washing the counter. <laughs> well, that's that, that was my original uh, idea with this whole thing before it it spun wildly out of control. But I like this this function better. I I do like being the bouncer because that's gonna give me eyes on everyone walking in the door. I I would even be outside maybe being able to look at people from across the street. You know, mm. see if somebody's ho holding a rocket launcher on their shoulder that I, I really need to <laughs> take right. care of. You Ooh, know, so the place right. doesn't open flames. Yeah. <laughs> oh great! Yep. Um, okay, so, so uh, you guys are going to open around happy hour ish, and uh, yep. Kurt is going to come out of the cave and uh, announce his, "Hey, I think we've identified a couple more um, threads similar to the Blastos Hardway deal," and then probably grab a drink and sneak back down. <laughs> Some fortification for the uh, yep uh, for the task ahead. Um, and okay let's see how should we do this i guess we can give you some patrons why not um a couple of people wander in no one outstanding to your eyes um they kind of tentatively are you going to be at the door slashik are you going to be like uh yeah i uh, outside i think the that door, what i'm going to do door, or? i'm going to be outside of the door i think i I don't know how visible I, I want to be because I know I'm in I'm a, ugh, I am an intimidating presence. I almost kind of want right. to be like in the vicinity, but not like super like, hey, this is a Just VIP. Smile, you know? smile, logic. <laughs> smile. Yeah, that that really worked. That really worked last time I tried to calm the Twilic down. That <laughs> that wasn't so great. <laughs> you do like some of those really big bouncers and just sit in a chair next to the door instead of standing up. <laughs> that that takes it puts people a little bit easier to know he, he has to at least stand up before he kicks your butt. <laughs> yeah, that could that could work. I mean, if you guys are are chill with that, I, I sit could there with a banjo or whittle here. whittle away at like a steel pipe with your axe or something. Just, with just your claws. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah fi filing your nails. Just sitting there all day. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, a couple people walk up tentatively. If you are actually sitting or standing outside, uh, are you guys actually open now? Or uh, yeah. Just, uh, Wait, I'm outside, so I can. <laughs> right, yeah. Come on in, friend. We've got uh, we've got new management, and new drinks. Uh, we're open for business. Oh, uh, okay. They kind of edge through the door. <laughs> they try and stay as far away from you, but at the same time, make it through the door. Um, it's just a couple of random people. They don't come in together. They just, you know, hey, and they look around. Um, hey, hey, uh, I'll take a drink. They just kind of 
hesitantly walk in. Have a seat. What are you drinking? Uh, I don't know. Sent the hall. <laughs> Sent the hall. Bud oh, oh, hall. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sent the hall light. <laughs> the hall light. That's not. That's real classy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, whatever. Whatever the. Uh, <laughs> Whatever's on tap, um, I guess, is the equivalent of what they're saying. A um, couple of craft synth halls here. <laughs> that would actually be funny. Yeah, we've heard of the craft brewery in our Star Wars campaign. <laughs> it's all the rage now. Um, yeah, so they, they sit there and they kind of look around. Um, they're not really sure what's all going on. They don't seem to know each other, um, and they came in separately. Um, and they're just kind of, you know, scoping the place out. They'll watch the hollow vid thing for a little while and then not really talking. They're kind of shy or not really sure what's going on. They're a little, um, you know, they, they're just not asking questions, I guess is the best way to put it. All right. Um, I'll just go chat them up. So where are you guys from? Uh, I'm from down the street or down the, Oh, did we talk earlier today? You, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Now I remember. You. Oh, I recognize you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, it's a f- fine place. Like what, like what you've done with the place. <laughs> it uh, seems a lot less cluttered. Oh, that's all. That's to. Keela. She, uh, she's been doing some redecorating. Ah, uh, yes, her? I, I remember her. Yeah. Um. So, still no idea what happened to the previous owner. <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> I don't want to get in the middle of something if I, you know. Oh, this shouldn't be any any trouble. I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it's anything bad. I mean, I uh, saw it. we. He never had a bouncer before, or the previous owner didn't. I didn't know why. Uh, why oh, he got we just, that, uh, just like to be safe. Front. All with you know, with with what's been going on recently, you understand. Well, a little extra safety. Can't blame oh, me, right? oh, 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 yeah. You know what? That makes he brightens up. That makes a lot of sense. It didn't really dawn on him before that. Um, that kind of clicks. Yeah, you're right. That's a good idea. This place could use some safety, you know, that way guy can drink in peace. Exactly. Uh, so he starts to brighten up. Um, have another drink. So, you know, I just wonder what happened to everybody. I mean, I didn't really care for the, the ownership previously. Something about them didn't strike me. Right. But, you know, I always felt like there was a lot more staff here than they needed, but well, you know, whatever. Um, do you guys still do the rooms and stuff in the back or? Um, yeah, we we've got rooms for rent if you're interested. No, I'll just just keep you know in case sometimes I have a few more than I should and don't really want to go home to the missus. <laughs> <laughs> to. Um, I understand. Okay, just make sure. Um, he'll he doesn't really say much more. He just uh, he'll he'll drink in peace uh, for a little while uh, before leaving. And uh, kind of the same with the other guy. You're going to get about the same out of these guys. They're it's happy hour. They're probably not. Uh, you're right. serious, hard booze and people that are just uh, stopping. Yeah, in. that's good. Just stopping. In. Yep, checking out the new place and then or old new old place and uh, before heading back out. Uh, let's do Kurtz. Give me two difficulty die roll, please, sir. All right, let me spool up the dice computer. Two purple. Um, one success, four advantage. All righty. You are able to ID one of the two other uh, hard ways for uh, for the best way I can explain it to you. Um, kind of collection points, if that, if that makes sense. Um, it is a store by the name of Vincent's Fine Fabrics. I'm trying to find my note on it. Where are you at? Printing out a note my from Excel mind. is a pain in the ass. I think my brain just exploded with the title <laughs> of that store. But Vincent's Fine Fabrics. <laughs> yeah, if for no other reason than that uh, that funny little leak of your uh, exactly. flowchart. Yeah. <laughs> Clothing. My, my, whole, <laughs> my whole thing. Yeah, my whole brain just exploded. Yeah, alarms are going off. <laughs> We've got it. The key to everything right there. <laughs> it was never about slaves. <laughs> it was never about slaves. It was all about Fine slaves. cashmere. It yeah. was all about the secret transport of like highly exotic silks. The only thing that popped into my mind was a jingle for Vincent's Fine Fabrics. Vincent's Fine Fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, uh... finest cashmere for you. 
<laughs> so, so what I'm starting to hear now is not so much that you guys are rolling up a slave ring, you're rolling out your own like business infrastructure and empire. Yeah. We should have Let's a. Let's go there, a take fabric. it over. We should have a fabric store. Yes. That's right. <laughs> really the funny. new mafia. Well, I. Uh, yeah. Um, it is, uh, you, with your advantage, you're able to dig up uh, just some of the background on it. Um, it is a like a tailoring shop. So a, uh, it is on the station. It's actually on Malibu Station. Uh, very much closer to the center of the station, towards the fine area, towards the nice, uh, bright, shiny visitors area. Um, it deals in uh, mostly in workers' clothing. So uh, people come in there to get uh, tailored, fitted to kind of the higher end uh, workers' equipment, not just like overalls and, and stuff, but um, if they need like very specific suits for something, like say you needed a has suit or some kind of uh, – suit made out of something to protect you from something specific. This is the type of place you would go. Uh, does that make sense? Um, instead, yeah, of going gotcha. to, yeah, instead of going to your corner shop to pick up some overalls and some boots, you're getting a, um, a tailored set of protective clothing. PPE, I believe is how we like to call it in the industry. Um, so uh, that is that is what you were able to locate. You find out exactly where they're at. Um no, they have not been blown up. Um, they have not been torched. That was going to be my question. Yeah, yeah. It, you find absolutely nothing on them other than that. Vincent's fine fabrics. You know, we provide fine cashmere, blah, 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 whatever his jingle just was. He recognized fine. it. Apparently, it's a fairly less reputable brand because your uh, Bothan friend, when he heard the name, started singing its jingle. <laughs> <laughs> it's very catchy. Um, but, yes, they are uh, – they aren't so much well-known as they're recognized. Um Unlike Hardways, which is just another nondescript bar, so far as you guys can tell, Vincent's is recognizable because it is much closer to the center of the station. That's my chair creaking. Uh, so, so, hmm. and so at this point, it would be uh, late in the day, uh, nine-ish, post, uh, post-dinner time, dinner hour. Um, you'll get more people actually show up at the bar now. Uh, it's... They don't come in in singles. They tend to come in in kind of work groups, groups of you know two or three people who look like they're getting off work or coming together as buddies, that sort of thing. Um, nobody really stands out to you. It's it's an eclectic mix of people. Um, some in work clothes, some in work like okay. casual clothes. Um, you eyeball them as they all go in. Nobody sticks out to you as like an over overwhelming threat. Um, there are some big dudes that look like they do heavy okay. duty throughout the day. There's some um, uh, there's some people like who don't actually bat an eye at you being there. Most of them kind of give you, they're a little wary of you, but there's a few of them who are like, meh, you know, ooh, big, scary, that sort of thing, and then and just walk by you. They're not intimidated, I should say. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask I'm gonna ask Keela to keep an eye out for those guys who were talking about um, NNA that one time. Oh, oh, oh the, uh, the, the electricians. The older yeah. electricians. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, and she will. Um, she doesn't point any of them out. Um, and she does mention she never saw them come in again, uh, although it had only been, <laughs> you know, a, a day or so between, uh, I shouldn't say a couple days between when she saw them last, which is the day of the great houses and, and all that stuff, the great house meeting. Um, but she never saw them come in between that and when uh, Hanani attacked. So um, either they just don't show up all the time or they decided they're not going to come back to this place anymore <laughs> for one reason or another. Um <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, she'll keep an eye out for them, for them, and she doesn't see it. You get a lot of questions uh, from curious people. Um, they don't dig too deep because they do know it's, you know, some things like this happen. Um, but uh, you do have a guy who comes in who looks, I don't want to say inspector-like, but he looks like someone who eyeballs your um, your licenses. Does that make sense? Um, as a... Uh, Oscalet would have noticed it. It's sort of thing. Like he comes in, he doesn't order a drink. He just like, like he does one of those like chin scratches to check your licenses. Um, as as he's wandering around the bar, does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he doesn't say anything. And if y'all don't stop him, he'll just wander back out. Um, and uh, off into the night or into the. Into the gloom. That's uh, that's going to be all your call, Phil, because uh, Slashik uh, yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. getting yeah, yeah, a threat yeah. from him. Right? Yeah. He oh, won't he you? Won't you have a? 
You want a drink, friend? What brings you to this part of town? Oh, I'm just, uh... Well, I'm just making sure that you guys have all your paperwork. Um, oh, um, I, I certainly hope that every, you're finding everything above board. Well, that's, uh... It looks like it. It's a little odd, um... To see, uh... Ownership of a place like this change hands so quickly, but... Uh... The paperwork all seemed right. It almost, it was almost too perfect, really. But, uh... I just had to come see for myself. Can't be too and, careful with that paperwork, we. <laughs> right. Yeah, he, he's very much pen, pencil pushing uh, type of guy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many how many places I've had to shut down in my day because they. A lot uh, of people. You know, I used to work. In, I used down. to work in government long time, a long time ago. Oh really? And, you know. Yeah, it's true. It is true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people don't people don't appreciate the bureaucracy. Right, exactly. It keeps things running. Right. Otherwise, you know, just reason. any old any old kook just wanders into a place, sets up a bar, without without knowing what they're doing, and <laughs> right. anything can happen. Right, exactly. I mean, for all I know, you guys could be be uh, selling poison beer back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, but let me know if I can I help you with anything, and. That's why I wanted to uh, I, I probably shouldn't offer you a free drink. That, no, no, you know no, no. that. I'm sure that goes against guild guild rules. But right, absolutely. know that I appreciate what you're doing. Yep, that's good. I I just wanted to check, and uh, um, I'm guessing who did, whose name did y'all put this in? I think it's Akila's in, name. Keela's I think Akila. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to check to make sure um, that, like I said, it's, it's a little odd to see a place like this, a, a well-established uh, place, be. Uh, change hands so quickly, um, but it's not mine to ask questions. Just to make sure the paperwork was done correctly, and I see your licenses are well displayed. So uh, uh, carry on. And, well, uh, thanks. I will. Uh, if you ever run into any trouble, um, you should know the proper channels. I'm, of course, of course. Make sure you follow them. They will guide you or guide your way, and uh, he'll walk out. Ah, right, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're doing we're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are you guys are doing good. Like it's you guys had Clayson set all this stuff up. So right, of course. Yeah, he made sure everything was above board. But there's always going to be somebody um, who's not a hundred percent on board with it. Um, Let's um. Can we talk about Kurt's information now, or is there something else having at the bar? Uh, no, nothing's going to happen tonight. I okay. mean, it's it's open at night. You guys will do some some pretty good business. Um, I'm not going to worry you guys with details of credits made, credits lost, all that good stuff. We might roll up something after like a month. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. kind of a rough, this is how much you've made. Um, but uh, no, no, nothing substantial happens. Just there's a lot of talk, um, kind of your typical water cooler talk about what's been going on. Um, nobody, as far as you can hear as you wander around, seems to have any appreciable detail of it. Like it's just what they've seen in the news. Or I have a friend of a friend who lived in that, that building, or uh, that sort of thing. So nothing, nothing too exacting in detail. Is anybody of... talking about the um, the head of the houses kind of basically getting in bed with the Imperials? Is anybody yeah. saying, how, "Hey, that's how, great"? That's yeah, what's the, yeah, what's their read on that? What that they, is that's actually an interesting uh, an interesting side that you get to it. <clears throat> There's no heated arguments over it. But there's some pretty rough discussing of it. You know, there's some people who agree to disagree only after, you know, having had a lot of drinks. Like, there's no kind of philosophical deep discussion of it. It's, it's, uh, I hate to be political about these things. But it's kind of like what you would run into in the early days before they had settled on two candidates in our last election. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> like, it's a prime, it felt like a primary discussion where we're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, it didn't. It didn't reach the levels of like the week before the actual election that you would have gotten in, but between the two camps. But they're definitely divided. There is no consensus from everybody one way or the other. And these look like all mostly guild working people. So, so they're divided between Valion and and uh, the guild, or or just you know the, like the, uh... divided between all of them are anti Valion. Uh, okay. it, like I said, that what happened was very, or at least they all on the surface are was very much a 9-11 moment. It was very okay. much a wake-up call to everybody. Um, but there, a lot of them are also not wanting to get in bed with the Empire. Gotcha. Um, they, they're, they're not 
willing to just throw away their sovereignty so fast. They, they, you know, they want to wait and see before they just bow down to yeah. the to the empire. And, and the ones who are more comfortable with the empire, why are they are they comfortable more for security? Is that because it? Yeah, that's that's what you're getting. Um, is a lot of security reasons. They're like, well, uh, we never orders. had this stuff. They can be, you know, they they'll make us safer. We. You know, we've never like we had a strong military a long, long time ago, and yeah, we've got an okay military, but like it's not a real military. A lot of them are like it's just a bunch of guys who that's what they grew up doing. It's not really, you know, hard trained, and um, they it, you don't have any historical reference on their uh, military might of, of the Malabar system. Um, so it, it's hard to get any kind of flavor reference from you guys. So you don't know of any war in the recent past. Um, so it, it, I'd almost say from, <clears throat> at least from your perspective, Phil, your character's perspective, mm. it's almost a little odd that the empire didn't just come in and say, we're taking over. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's like, why didn't they do this? And the yeah, only thing that would draw to you comes back to the, um, they, it, this is, I think we went over this a little bit early on is <clears throat> they, if they yeah, try and take from the people, the people control everything. It's almost a true, in a way, democracy. It's, it's run by the people, <clears throat> even though they have representatives. If the yeah. people revolt against it, you can't take it from them. Um, so it, it is a weird play by the Empire. If they come in and try and just manhandle everything, there's no real military. I mean, there is a military, but there's no real military that you can see, that you've seen. Um, that uh, the, They could just come in and, you know, subjugate everybody uh but it, it almost feels like they're wary of doing that because the whole system could just shut down like they could just say nope we're not going to do it anymore and threatening it would just make it worse um so what the empire is in a sense doing what it feels like they're doing to you guys is playing the waiting game trying to win the people's will over to them um to make it easier um that instead of subjugating they get them to willingly you know, right. ask for subject subjugation. So, uh, so what you're getting now is a, a bit of that. Um, I, I know I keep going back to 9-11, but in the way that's what's going on here is this big attacks happened <clears throat> and you've had what is your controlling body, the, go the great house, uh, the speaker for the great house and such has said, we need more oversight. We need, you know, to let go a bit of our privacy as it were, so that we, we can be safer. So if you guys remember that fight, that kind of uh, right. <clears throat> discussion that was going on back then, in um, the early 2000s, how much privacy do we give up um, in, you know, for the sake of security? And that's a similar discussion to what's going on now. How much of our control, of our own control, do we give up in the sake of security um, from this uh, terrorist force that's in the area? So, right. um, so that's the discussion. That's what's going on right now. It's still very academic. It's still people. <clears throat> we don't know what the empire is going to do. It's all just rumor. They didn't, you know, it, it really does. They didn't come in here and subjugate us. They came in and just came in asking for resources and we were happy to provide. Um, and now we're, we're asking for help. And then the other side's like, you've seen the, the stuff that they've been doing, or you've heard about this, or I used to be in another system. And, and, um, uh, and so you have that discussion going on now. Um, at least here, it, it might be, might be more brutal in other <laughs> in other bars, but at least in this one, it's uh, mostly contained, mostly uh, mostly quiet discussion. So, um, but yeah, you guys are, you guys can run the bar empty whenever you want to. Um, okay. Well, let's um, let's, uh, yeah, let's let's do a maybe we can. Hmm. Should we wait to talk until uh, we close the bar? Is that something that we should do? Yeah. Yeah, definitely be better to yeah, it's close. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, why don't we, you know, get to that hour where we close and we should all like kind of clean and, and, and chat maybe. So if it's, if it's about nine o'clock now, I would imagine we would shut the bar down. I don't know, two or three o'clock in the morning. No. So, so I was thinking. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think that's so, about man, yeah. So what I would say is let let us press for another six hours downstairs in the basement. Yeah, it's actually a good uh, idea. That'll give us six hours. We'll keep doing our thing. 
All righty. Uh, one more roll. Oh, you should make this one unless you really screw it up. Um, one. So this one's easy. One die. Okay. Yeah, this is where it's going to all fall, fall apart, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't failed yet, so you're doing good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Two, two success, three advantage. Yeah. Okay. So you're able to finally hack this whole thing apart. Um, so you've, you've broken the code of this. Uh, you've, you've got good records. You're able to, to, uh, check it on another one. Cause I think you guys had more than one disc with this information on it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you're actually able to check it and like, yeah, this is really pulling across. Like, this is it. Like, this is the key. It's broken it free. Uh, you find the other one, the other, uh, uh, Hardway equivalent, and it is a location called Starlight Academy. Um, it is, if I can find my page here, blah, 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 blah. no, that's not you, that's not you. All right, there he is. Uh, crap, like I said, trying to print out the comments in an Excel file is uh, just an absolute pain in the butt, and then find them again. All right. Um, yeah, the, all I've got written down here is it's a pilot training facility. So it's a uh, think of it like a community college, but purely for piloting. Um, it is located on the station, um, on Malibor Station. Uh, it has not been destroyed, so far as you can tell. Um, it is located out towards the uh, hangar side, one of the one of the edges of the station, because uh, it needs to be near um, spaceships, obviously. Um, so. The Starlight Academy teaches piloting skills, everything from low end, uh, like interplanetary, to the to the larger like haulers that are going out of system, um, and it also does um, like astrogation. Is that right? Astrogation. Mm -hmm. um, so it does astrogation uh, training. It it does stuff specifically uh, for that, um, and, and it it deals with ship maintenance. Um, very much a community college for ship-based uh, transporting and hauling and that stuff. It's it's run by the Transport Guild, or it's uh, not run by, um, licensed by the Transport Guild, um, since it falls very heavily into their sway. But it has not been destroyed. It is still up, up and running. They have advertisements on their, quote, webpage. Um, and uh, they're familiar as well. They're, they're a well-known name here on the station um, because a lot of the a lot of people went there um, coming into the system like that weren't from the system, but moved into the system, came into the system to find a job. It's a, Hey, look, we can take, we can go to starlight, learn something and pick up a trade and join a guild. So um, that is the last one you find. What you do not find, however, is any upward link past Helgen's. So you see that everything from all of these three uh, chains, and this is the first two steps that you see. And I'll, I'll explain where they go from there. Um, nothing goes backwards beyond Helgen. So Helgen's is a stopping point for for these three um, chains. And Mika is ultimately the last point in that chain because everything went to Mika. Um, all he was doing was tabulating the uh, kind of money moving in and out of it. He was he was never actually like watching the details of any specific thing. He was just, provided these files and it spit out on his thing. This is how much was being made. This is, this is a transfer costs, blah, 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 percentages to every person. And then how much was supposed to be doled out to, to his superior, which the last you knew was Kretzner. Um, so he's the only one left in the chain that knew Kretzner. So far as you can tell, at least in this chain that knew Kretzner. Um, so in a way it's a bit of a dead end but at the same time, it's it's there are it's two information. Yeah, it's information, but it is a bit of a dead end because there is nothing pointing past Mika. Like it doesn't suddenly say, "Look at all these places it was going and all these people." Right, but you know, it it could be compartmentalized. I'm thinking, like you know, right. Well, that's what you. Yeah, that's what you've picked up on, and that's what every single person that you've run into and kept alive has, has been telling you is every piece of this has been compartmentalized. That. They weren't supposed to know the next link in the chain. You know, Hardways had people that sent yeah. sent things to Helgens, and 
Helgens never knew Blasso's. Blasso's never knew Helgens. Um, each piece only knew the next one in the chain. So were all the were all the slaves getting shipped out through Blasso's? Uh, yes, at least on this chain, yes. On um, this chain, yeah. Yeah, on this chain. So, the at least the ones you guys have found. So what you found, and, and like I said, everything only connects to one piece except for these files. So Starlight, you find, actually connects downward. So Starlight is your hard way equivalent, okay? Yeah. Um, there, the next piece in the chain is actually a place called the Politon Dockyard. That's another, that's actually a, not on station. It is at the Politon Dockyards, which is, uh, crap, where's my system map? Um, another location in system. It's inside the actual Malibor system. Um, just outside the, basically inside the gate, inside the Malibor gate. So, um, and of course, it's definitely still operating because <laughs> it is a, it is the massive dockyards for all the the ships and and things for most of the station. God, where the hell? One of these days, I need to. I almost need to Biff to come down here and like organize all my crap so I can find it, but not read any of it. Don't read anything, Biff. Just organize it so I can find it. Um, okay. Uh, Politon Dockyards is uh, a moon, or it's not really a moon. It's a station, large, gigantic station that uh, circles, hovers, orbits uh, Malibor 4, which if you guys recall from way, way back, Malibor 4 is the home of the giant uh, city-sized fuel refinery. It is the major okay. resource node of the Malibor system. Um, they do other resources, but the fuel gas mining is the big one. Um, and, and Malibor 4 is where it all gets refined, and that's why the dockyards sit right outside um, there. So uh, the Starlight Academy links from there to the Politon dockyards, um, and you can't see any further than that. You can tell it goes somewhere, but it... it goes to a person's name that doesn't mean anything to you guys it's, it's just a like a individual quote unquote like it doesn't say person's name does that make sense like okay run, like almost like runner given to runner like okay like, what's the what, what what exactly is the link is it money or it, it the link for all this stuff yeah the link to the Politon dockyards the same thing yeah, it's the same thing as credits being moved back and forth between the uh, okay. yeah the credits are being moved between starlight and Poly just like blasso's so it looks like slaves are picked up at Starlight somehow. This, this, this is what you're grabbing. This is what you're getting just based off the file. Yeah. It's assumptions you're, you're drawing. Slaves are somehow collected at Starlight and passed to Politon Dockyards and then moved from there to another location that you don't have the name of. Um, so you don't know if, if that's going off system, out system. Because um, yeah. you don't, even from Blasos, it, it does the same thing. It has a connector. Um, that's just like a reference point. It's not, it's like a variable. Does that make sense? It's not an actual person's name. Um, and so Politons is doing the same thing. And then for Vincent's, you actually have Vincent's going from the fine fabrics place to galaxy's finest fit, um, which is on, uh, what the hell's the name of that? That's on Malibor three. Um, which that's the, uh, I'm sorry, connection point for Mal is on Malibor 3. So Vincent's is your starlight or hard way so that somehow they're collecting slaves is what you're, you're thinking in your head if you're drawing on a chalkboard. Mm. Um, and Galaxy is somehow transferring these things out system even though they're closer to the center of the system. Um, and they actually connect. This actually gives you a third point. Unlike it doesn't go to a variable, for example. Um, it goes to a place called... Centro Solutions. Well, all these names are fun. Now, where did my breakdown of that guy go? Which is... Where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, dun, dun, dun. Almost there. Uh, they, uh, uh, Galaxy's Finest Fit are the, they're a fabric importer, wholesaler, is what you're getting from them. Um, and Centro Solutions looks like a staffing place. Looks like a, uh, 
uh, what are those called? Um, that you go to like a staffing agency is kind of what they look like. Hmm. Um, no particular guild affiliation. Um, it's like an it's all, nice guild all guild place. They're they're like a, they're covered. they're part of the banking one, but they're uh, um, officially part, I guess, the trade the trade guild. Um, but they don't only tailor, pardon the pun, to uh, to uh, bankers to trade guildsmen. They anybody can go there. It's what you're getting from their from their website, hollow site, um, is that they're just a general staffing agency that put people in the right position, you know. So you've got a strange chain there. Um, Hard Ways to Blastos is a very succinct, very straightforward. Um, we drug them at the bar, dump them on a, <laughs> dump them on a inner system transport, and pew, off they go. Yeah. Um, the the one from Starlight is a little bit more confusing because it's it's a couple of points. Um, and you're still not sure which one of those is going out system, although you have a feeling it's somewhere at the Politan dockyards. Uh, without knowing anything about the locations, it's hard. I can't really give you anything on it. Um, and then the the Vincent's Fine Fabrics has like three stages in it, so you're not really sure what each stage what relates, stage to. relates to. So, in that, from a from from a um, a purely mechanical perspective, uh, for the for the new obvious leads that we've come up with, which area is in closer proximity to us here at the bar. So like Starlight Academy or Vincent's? Uh, Starlight would be the easiest to, for you guys to get to. It's only, it's on the outer edge. Um, they're both, I'm not going to say equidistant, but Vincent's is closer to the center of the nice area of the, okay. of the station. Um, I'm not saying you guys aren't presentable, but your current tactics tend to lend themselves not to be <laughs> in the middle of the station. Um, yeah. But you can always, I mean, maybe your Bothan friend needs a new set of clothes or um, Kurt needs to touch up on his flying lessons. Who knows? So, um, right. Uh, those are both there. Uh, you're not going to, it, it would be a little odd for Slashik to run into the Vincent's fine fabrics place looking for. Anything. Yeah. I, um, I figured as but, much, but it all can, I'm not going to tell you how to play it, but there are options on the table for all sorts of things. Um, and, uh, or you could ignore all those completely because you have other things too. So, um, but you have, you have cracked the file. So Kurt has cracked the file here, um, and, uh, successfully pulled out everything he can. So, but you can see amongst all of these things, it is a lot of people, a lot of people are, are leaving this system, at least from this, these three threads, it's hundreds of people have gone in the past couple of months. And it's one of those, it's almost jaw-droppingly big, this this whole thing is. Mm. It's, it's I, at least the way I, I kind of played it is, you guys came into this, stumbled upon this, were pulled into this, mm. thinking, oh, it's one or two people. Um, it's, it's the occasional missing person. Um, but if you guys recall all the way back to the original kind of openings for each person, uh, especially Slashik's, it was started out small and no one really took notice of it. Now over time it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger where more and more people were starting to recognize, Hey, wait a minute. So-and-so didn't come home. Um, and, and that's what's happening. You're starting to see mm -hmm. this like, Holy crap. This, this is actually picking up a pace. Where's it going? What is it doing? Why is it getting faster? Why, you know, are they in a rush to do something or are they, have they, just been getting away with it and just getting greedy uh, you know that that sort of thing so mm -hmm. um, but you're definitely with this one file you're able to see evidence of that pace quickening across uh, the past few months so so good job kudos I actually had some stuff in there in case you failed <laughs> Which, uh, oh, all that work oh well I have to save it for when you actually try and start start hunting down the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the nameless person yeah, I'm yeah, really that was actually going to be my next thing. Yeah, this was a dry run. <laughs> this that would be a long montage. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. So it's like what three o'clock in the morning now of yep, day you guys, ten. Yes, it would be day ten, early, early, early day ten. So you guys, I think we're going to have your discussion now, if you'll want. Yeah, yeah. 
Let's do it. <clears throat> so, I think the question is, do we send this information to Clayson now? Or do we hold on to it for a while? I think I'm in I have the mindset to uh, bring Clayson into the fold on what we have here. Uh, there's certainly a lot of ground to cover. He might be able to not only assist with the covering of the ground, but might be able to provide a fair amount of information on some of these locations beyond what we already know. I agree. And at the same time with that information, we now that we've gotten pretty much all the, uh, the things that we need from Mika, potentially he could prove to be useful again and, and uh, kind of tipping tipping the hand a little bit to Clayson and see if Clayson actually has a leak in his agency where uh, that's true where if if we tell Clayson about Mika and someone does come to try and silence him then we know that Clayson can't always well not Clayson himself but, but he's not he, secure he can't always be right I think we should tell Clayson that we have Mika uh, but hold off on telling him that we know everything. That way, if there is a leak in his organization, they'll just they'll only know that we have Mika. They won't know that they need to shut down their whole operation yet. Does that make sense? It's interesting. I do. Yeah. I mean, I, it does make sense. That's the, so I, I see two two possible paths here. Either exactly what you said, tell them just that we have Mika and we don't have information, which will a potentially keep their operation running. B have them have them try and silence Mika, which of course, me being me, I love that idea. But uh, alternatively, telling Clayson all the information we have might just get us a little leg up on those other areas, but might tip off someone if there is a leak that uh, that we're onto the trail. So. Right. I think that... Kurt, what do you think? So, I suppose it's all independent on what we want to ask Clayson to do with the information we provide him. If we're just talking to Clayson and and we aren't necessarily giving him directions as in, hey, we need you to go investigate this, which of course he's not going to. He's going to send one of his people to go do it. Um, you're, you're basically um, either playing into Oscalette's uh, strategy of there may be a leak within his greater organization or, or you're playing into is Clayson the leak himself and how we want to manage him uh. it's, it is true and I, I, I'll be honest in the past I've had my doubts about Clayson and his you know loyalties and, and everything but recently recently this, this whole turnaround of events has, has made me feel like he's more trustworthy than not and if there was a leak i feel like it would probably be within his uh, organization and not actually him right it doesn't necessarily have to be him i think we should tell him about mika wait about a day and then tell him uh the information if nothing happens with mika yeah that, you know, it sounds right now mika is the only tie we have um from the organization to an actual imperial None of the data that we've got, you know, as, as indicated, goes higher than Helgen. Helgen's not an Imperial. Meek is the only one that has, if you will, hands-on tying the slaver ring to the Imperials right now. Um, it kind of potentially exposing Mika. We certainly don't want to hand over Mika to Clayson. Um, but I also don't want to lose the only witness, if you will, no, to the important. Imperial tie. And Ascalette, I don't think you want to lose that either. That is a good point. I, I I agree with you, but I want you to have an ounce of trust that I I think <laughs> the three of us and I'm I'm pointing to myself here especially, I will not let that happen. I think he is so important to us. Uh, uh, as you said, I'm not going to let anything happen to this guy. I will, however, make sure that whoever is sent for him is captured and potentially maintains his head or her head, and we can 
question question them and have a new tie. I, it's it is bait, but you have to understand that I I do not uh, uh, have a lack of value for Mika's life. Mika did questionable things in the past, and he's kind of trying to redeem himself personally. This is a big thing for me. I. I want to give him a second chance. I want him to come out of this unscathed and alive, even after the attempt on his life. So I th I almost feel like we should kind of get this, get it kind of rolling and, um, and see. But I, I understand you think there's a risk. I think that uh, we can mitigate that risk quite a bit, myself especially. We also won't be able to babysit Mika for forever. Well, that's the other thing, too. I mean, every time that you and I, and I was thinking of running out to Starlight, or, yeah, Starlight Academy right now with the three of us, but we're leaving Mika alone with just um, uh, Gila. And there's so many things in my mind can go wrong from that. I'd rather be in control of the situation and present. I'd rather set this up than to deal with the aftermath. Any so yeah, so so what about <laughs> land? So so I think what 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 we got out on the table, what's being suggested is that we communicate Mika being at the bar, but we're not sharing any other information with Clayson. Well, I think that we should share a little bit, which is that you know we we have him. And, you know, in about 24 hours or so, we're going to try and make him talk kind of a thing. Like, give almost give him a little bit of a head start uh, to, to, you know, disseminate some of that so, information. See, the other thing, too, is I almost wonder if we should tell Clayson to disseminate the information. Because Clayson might be on the up and up and, and, and say, like, yeah, you know what? That's good. We don't want to lose this lead. And then keep his mouth shut. And then really nothing happens, and then we don't get any information anyway. If we take a leap of faith with Clayson and say, hey, listen, can you disseminate this information to, like, individuals in your organization? You know, let it get around that we actually have this really good lead, blah, 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 and the name is Mika. It might be enough to bring someone out to, uh, you know, uh, as opposed to the, uh, the alternative. It depends on how much we trust Clayson. I think Slashik at the Slashik kind of trusts him at this point, especially with the coup and and Clayson kind of being like, "This is just absolutely absurd," and drinking with us, and it kind of seemed like a an unusually honest gesture from him, where it was easier to read yeah. uh, when Oscillate was talking to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I think I'd, I'd be okay with that. What do you think, Kurt? I'm thinking that's the <laughs> that's the problem right now. Um, um, So, so okay. Let me let me let me talk through something here. So we we approach Clayson. We tell him we've got we've got Mika. Uh, he's a he's not an idiot. Clayson's a sharp guy. He's gonna ask us. So, you know, he's probably been hiding for two days. Where'd you find him? How'd you locate him? What's gonna be the story to fill the gap between when when Clayson was here drinking with us <laughs> and when right, Mika's right. actually downstairs working? <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, ju just like Oscillate was saying, um, oh, wait, am I in character? Are we not in character? I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Oscillate was saying, we, we don't have to necessarily tell him that Clayson, uh, we don't have to tell him that Nico has been here hacking away. Um, just that we're, you know, giving that information that he has. If he does ask, we can say, like, listen, this is a, kind of a sensitive uh, uh, a thing right now, but what we want to do, I guess, all right, so Kurt, do you trust Clayson? Here's the real question. Do you trust Clayson? I, I, I trust Clayson as a rebel. Uh, you know, he's part of the alliance. I just don't know what his allegiance is. Um, you know, talk is one thing. I'm trying to pin it back on some actions. And... Uh, that's, that's, that is true, and that's good. I like, I like your... You're uh, being cautious with that. Um, if we believe that he is truthful in being a rebel, which I think all three of us do believe, 
then we can assume that he has not only no love for the empire, he is, he is adamantly opposed to the empire. And if that is the case, can we not assume that this, if, if, um, if Mika is tied to the Imperials, that he will want to kind of help us with, with this? I mean, is there anything that he gains by not helping us with this Imperial problem? Oh, I think he, I think he, get, he stands to gain a lot. And, and I, well, so w what I throw at is what are we, you know, I, I, I suppose I appreciate the leak aspect, um, but, you know, he, he's, he's not, he's not in favor of the empire and we're, we are with Mika we're, we're confident that there's a tie to the empire off the slaver trade. He's going to be motivated to try to establish that link. And, and I suppose I struggle with what, what are we really going to be losing if he knows as much information as we know right now. Um, and although I can't, okay. I, I'm not going to be able to put my finger on it. I feel as though, we're going to get a better read in the short term on potentially what side he's playing to the great houses or to the queen if we've got all our cards out on the table in this particular instance. But if the, if the other side gets their hands, if get to look at our cards, then they'll be able to start shutting down those places before we can actually investigate. And, and so that now I go back to, are we asking Clayson to do something with the information, or are we just informing him? If we if we tell him, hey, we want you to send men at this location because we're going to go at this location, he's obviously disseminating the information then. If we just tell him, this is what we know, and here's where we're going to go next, we'll get in touch with you in a couple hours or something like that. If You've we give him the information, the if we give him the information, he'll 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 make his own decision. We can try to influence it, but ultimately, we're not we're not in charge of his men. His he's in, technically in charge of us, or so he thinks. True. True. Um. Hmm. Regardless of, of uh, the decision, and I know that I am, I'm, you know, maybe overconfident in thinking that I can protect his life and everything. We could always leak that he is here, but actually have him move to our old lair in the meantime. Um, and that way he's actually not in any danger of if the bar gets attacked. Uh, if, the, if that has any significance, although I know that the, the main question is I think is he's safer here with safety. us protecting him rather than at the lair unprotected. Yeah. Yeah, but even can, if, even if I, I, I don't trust that we'll be able to move him secretly. Yeah, it's going to be. I yeah. remember how that worked last time. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe what we do is we tell we tell Clayson we have Mika, but we're keeping Mika at the lair. Yeah, and we see if the lair gets uh, gets hit. Yes, but if it does. That'll prove the leak. Uh, you know, it's not the worst idea in the world. <laughs> weren't there you, you go. weren't I you saying we should tell him everything? <laughs> what are you What are you doing? <laughs> so, right. I'm, it, the, to, to me, telling Clayson and everything is not a, a hill that Kurt's character is going to die on. Um, I, I think he's more going to. Uh, Kurt is going to be far more concerned about making sure that Mika is protected because right now Mika is the only link to Kretzner and yes. Kretzner's got to go down along with the empire. So right, right. I, right. I do not want to be playing a bunch of risks with Mika right now. And I'm, I'm and, and the other thing that, that is gnawing in Kurt, my mind is more than likely, my suspicion is if they want to take Mika out and they've got a hint that 
somebody is really on to the operation, uh, they're going to be sending the big boy. They're not going to be sending the, um, what was it? The flaming skulls, <laughs> or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, we're going to get a visit from the big man. The big man. Right. And as you well know, in Slayfix mind. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't even I don't even need to explain it. This is <laughs> scorekeeper central, man. I mean, this is this is his whole so thing. And yeah. The sense so, of duty is is high. And and if we if we really do want to draw out the big man, I'm fine with drawing him out, but I'd like to try and draw him out, you know, to like the wrong location. So we're either putting Mika in the lair and telling everyone is at the bar. Or you know, vice versa. But we want to we want to draw our target to the place where Mika isn't. I I kind of agree. Oh, ideally, ideally, mm -hmm. yes. But I don't think that ideally, but... it's. I don't think I don't think it's feasible. We'd have to have a really good plan to move them secretly. Yes, but also we want to we want to be able to fight where we're most comfortable. I mean, I feel like. At this point, we've been in this bar for days now. We know the ins and outs. We, we you know where the cover is. We, we could set it up beforehand. I feel if we lure them to the lair and, and he's not there, there's not a real good place to fight with our old lair. You know, there's a small alley where the door is, technically, and then there's the door with the single room, which still smells like the three of us uh, combined. And <laughs> it might not, be the, might not be the best, at least here at the bar, there's places to run. I mean, if we are in the bar central and it just goes downhill real quick, we could escape out the back. Um, if if we want to make a last stand, we could go down the the, the uh, hidey hole and, and try our luck. Hopefully, we're better off than the the bartenders uh, and the uh, the the original crew here. But I have a feeling it's not going to get that bad. I I think that we can. I think we can do this. We can take it. And this is, this is all to say that this even happens. It is also likely we tell the information to Clayson and nothing happens after 24 hours or 48 hours or, or you know, however long. It is possible that it stays and dies on his lips and he, he is true to his word, which is almost as good intel as having someone sent to kill him. Because then we could tell Clayson, all right, we want you to disseminate the information loudly and uh, see what happens. Um, and then, then potentially we get results. So what's our play here? All right. I, what do you, what do you say? We tell him about Mika. Slashik, well, I'm sorry. I I say yes. Let's tell Clayson about Mika. Tell him that we're holding him here, and uh, probably within a day we'll we're gonna get some information from him. Okay. Great. Let's let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Let's. What's his number again? <laughs> Five two five. Yeah. Uh, five two five rebel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. That sounds. That sounds. Okay. Great. So you guys have decided to tell Clayson that you have Mika, and then explain to me again. I've, I've lost a bit of the plot of it. So, um, <laughs> gonna tell him that we we have Mika. We're pumping him for information. Uh, prefer not to tell him how we got him. All right. Uh, that's about it. All right. So you're not letting him know that you've already got the information. No. Just that you've got me. Yeah. They were kind of delaying it 24 hours, if you will. Yeah, just to compartmentalize the information a little bit. Okay. So that's early morning, day 10. Okay. All righty. Or I guess you'll tell them at some point during day 10. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I suppose we go to bed or something and he shows up in the morning maybe yeah let's let's take a little rest before we tell him that yeah. you know yeah yeah i mean he might not even is is he even going to meet us in person for this or is this better off just as i the, doubt uh, i doubt he'd meet you call. in person for it um yeah yeah you'd yeah, have to but not on that to, yeah 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 you you're uh you're still mostly dealing with uh the runners the runners. runners, yeah. I mean, he's so he's a little bit more forward, but yeah. you're still running, still running information back and forth. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help us continue improving and expanding our channel's content.